I'm driving. Hands 10 and 2 going on that all too familiar road. It feels like forever since I got behind the wheel. I'm roughly five minutes away from my house. I know this road, but today something is different. I feel lost as I look around the neighborhood, trying to find my bearings, trying to find something recognizable. But nothing is ringing a bell. I tell myself that I know this road, don't I? As I keep driving, I pass one particular house with a very bright roof, but it's not the roof that startles me, it's what's on their lawn. It's a bear. A huge brown bear, biggest I've ever seen, its fur sparkling from the hot afternoon sun. It's just lying on the lawn, motionless, asleep perhaps? I drive by the house, but I just can't stop staring in the direction of that bear. How and why is there a bear out here in this residential area? There's no forest nearby, and we don't live in an area, let alone state, that has bears just running around. I've cleared the house by about a hundred yards at this point, still driving and not looking what's in front of me, head cocked back to keep staring at the beast. Suddenly, I hit something in front of me. A car? Pole? A, dare I say, pedestrian? Whatever it was, it causes me to jerk forward with force and my head hits the steering wheel. Lights out. My eyes slowly open as I start to come to. As I catch full sight and awareness of my surroundings, I notice I'm still in the car and it's moving on its own. Had I been driving the entire time I was out cold? I grab the wheel and pull off to the side of the road near a sign. My vision was a bit blurry, but I focused on the sign and it read, Welcome to St. Augustine. I'm nowhere near my previous destination at all. St. Augustine is around two hours away from where I live. How did I end up here? Did anyone notice me passed out just driving on the highway? Confused and slightly annoyed, I quickly came to the realization that this is where I needed to be, but why though? I get back into my car and drive to the next possible exit into the town of St. Augustine. I find a place to park and make my way into a part of town where a huge gathering of people were. Then I notice the people and their costumes. Everyone adorned with demonic masks or skeletal face paint to even some people pretending to be zombies shambling about. Varied garments as far as I can see as a few walk past they'd stare at me in confusion or look of, is this guy wearing that? If anything, I'm more confused than any of these clowns. I look normal. As I continue to walk, a huge banner comes into my field of view atop an archway which reads, Week of the Dead Festival. Come out and show us your true inner demons. The sign made no damn sense, but it did explain the costumes. I keep walking around, feeling more and more out of place, thinking to myself, I need to get back home, dreading that long drive. My thoughts were interrupted by a man yelling out to me, Hey! Sir! Sir! I turn towards him and make a gesture with my hand pointing at myself, and he exclaimed, Yeah, you! Come here! I slowed my pace and allowed him to make his way towards me. I do not know this man let alone trust his intentions. As he came within five feet of me, he says, Sir, you should really have that looked at. I replied, What are you talking about? He then pointed at my head and said, That bruise on your forehead, it's quite bad, and you have some blood coming down. The accident! I had completely forgot to check myself, or even my car for that matter, to see if I was okay. But it was strange, because I didn't feel any pain or discomfort. I reached up to touch my forehead to see just how bruised or swollen I truly was, but the man stopped me and said, Oh no, don't touch it. You don't want to bruise it anymore. Listen, I own a little motel just around the corner. We're pretty booked due to the festival, but I'll let you stay in my personal room and call someone to have it checked out while you rest. I thought to myself, why not? I mean, this complete stranger was nice enough to care that I didn't pass out or worse due to this trauma. 
So I followed him into the motel, which was crowded with people talking and exiting rooms. He continued past them, and he led me to what I assumed was his personal room. He took out his keys, fumbling a bit, and proceeded to unlock the door. As he opened it, it let out this loud creak, as if it hadn't been opened for years. I didn't think much of it, just brushed it off as it needed some new hinges or something. Here, sir, please stay right here, and I will call someone to have a look at that bruise ASAP. He left the room with haste, slamming the door behind him. I was there, sitting on what I presumed was his bed, ready to lie down, but decided instead to check myself in the bathroom mirror, just to see how badly I injured myself. I made my way into the bathroom, sort of psyching myself up and looked at the mirror, and I was completely in shock at what I saw. My face, it was completely fine. I had no bruise on my face, no disfigurement, not so much as even a damn scratch. My shock quickly turned to anger as I stormed out of the room, ready to give this man a piece of my mind. Why lie to someone about an injury? I stepped out, slamming the door behind me in anger, and noticed something was off. The place was completely empty. Not so much an empty as if everyone just got up and left all of a sudden, but that emptiness as if nobody had been here for years. I started looking around and shouting hello for the man or anybody for that matter. I didn't get so much as creaking floorboard in response. I walked up to one of the rooms and tried the door which to my surprise was unlocked. I looked in ready to ask if anybody was there but instead I was greeted with a room that had not been lived in for years. The walls dirty, dust was prevalent as far as the eye can see, and even the furniture was broken beyond repair. I started to run around looking into every room that hadn't been locked to find myself staring at the same condemned state as the first. Every room, aside from the one I was in, was completely dilapidated. No one had been in this motel for years. I ran towards the front door, not giving a damn about anything but myself, and I pushed through the double doors with such urgency that they almost flew off their rusty hinges, and was greeted with the early night air. But, like the motel I just exited, the streets were dead silent. Not a person outside, just the sound of wind. I thought, where the hell is everybody? Wasn't there some dead carnival fiesta going on? I thought the draw would be its night activities. Before I could ponder any more, my thoughts were interrupted by the sound of a young girl's cries for help. It was distant, but still audible enough to know the direction it was coming from. But not long after that, I heard another, more sinister sound coming from the same direction. The sound of an older person's laugh. It was downright chilling, but I quickly came to the conclusion that whoever was crying was probably being harassed or chased by this creeper and needed help. I put away my fears and started to run in the direction of both sounds. I ran deeper into the city, in the direction of the crying and creepy laughter, which has become more prevalent at this point. The laughter is getting so much louder and making my skin crawl, but I have to save whoever's in danger. I couldn't live with myself knowing that I could have done something to prevent someone from being hurt or raped or worse. I came to a wide alleyway, which had multiple paths, the sounds now echoing off the walls. I took a chance and headed towards the left path. I then took a right, then another left, then a left, then a right. I knew I was on the right path. I was getting close. I then took what would be the last turn of this maze, only to stop in my tracks. I had reached a dead end, but that's not what caused me to stop. It was the sight of twenty, no, fifty, maybe more, people with their backs turned to me. I gasped at the sight as I literally screeched to a halt. They in unison turned to face me. All of them, every single one was wearing a mask, each one an identical clown mask. The eyes were wide-eyed with black pupils, white skin and sporting a crooked menacing grin. They all stared at me, motionless. I was ready to turn around and book it the hell out of there when I heard the all too familiar sound of that laugh. Only, it was directly behind me. 
I spun around faster than I ever have in my life and was greeted with another group of sadistic clown-faced people. I was surrounded. I had no escape. Then, both groups in unison started to inch closer to me. I was frozen in fear. There was no way I could fight my way through all these people and live. They then stopped when they were both within arm's length of me and stared. Then, in that same unison as before, they reached into their pockets and pulled out a blowgun. Without a moment's hesitation, they proceeded to fire upon me at once, and I felt a hundred needles striking me all over my body. I looked down and saw the horror of dozens of needles protruding from my flesh, and quickly felt my body giving out. The poison. It had entered my bloodstream. I was losing control. The weight of my body was too much for my legs to handle. I fell to the ground, hitting my head on the hard floor. Now staring up to the sky, I was completely paralyzed. My eyes started to feel heavy. I tried with all my strength I had in me to keep them open, but they weighed a ton. As my vision continued to fade, the last thing I saw were the clowns peering over me with their sadistic smiles. Then everything went dark. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, real quick, I wanted to give a sort of background history lesson on the emphasis for this story. Um, it, it was it was actually a dream I had a little over nine years ago. And um, around that time, I had a lot of pretty vivid dreams. And what I did was I made them into short stories, kind of like Edgar Allan Poe style. And so I, I posted them. And then back in the day, they got a good amount of feedback. And I figured, why not? Let's maybe do like a voiceover kind of thing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm not going to lie, this was a bit of a chore to edit, just trying to get everything working correctly. And so I'm hoping that my mic quality is tons better than it was in the, my previous videos, which has been pretty shoddy. So guys, I thank you so much for sticking to the end, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I have a few more of these, so if you guys would like to see more, just let me know. Um, really helps me out if uh, you guys like, comment, all that good stuff. But anyways, guys, I'll see you next time.